Welcome to FTBL Culture. It's your boy, Culture Cams. It's a massive week in the Premier League. You know what it is. It's the title race. Some are calling it the title decider. Man City, Arsenal at the Etihad. This could be a vintage Barclays fixture. So you know I'm a little bit of a tactical myself. We're going to get into this one. Let's go. The stage is the Etihad Stadium. You need to get a result to try and win the Premier League. I feel all too familiar with this feeling. I remember in 2012, Manchester United get a result at the Etihad. Listen, title's done. <laughs> We're rolling in the sunset. We would have had 14 by now. Life is good. But one man said, mm -mm -mm. we are going to get our first ever title. And that was Vincent Company with a bullet header. And it just, listen, once that went in, you knew what's going to happen. The scene again is the Etihad Stadium, 2018-19. Liverpool walk up into the Etihad knowing if they get a result, the title is theirs. And that would have been their first one in 30 years or whatever it was. But again, one man said, mm-mm-mm-mm. It's coming back to the blue half of Manchester. And that was Leroy Sané. Boom! What a goal. 2-1 Man City. John Stones as well with that clearance. City walk away again. A do or die fixture. Walk away to the title as champions. The feeling is all too familiar for Man United fans and for Liverpool fans. And I'm afraid it might get real spooky for Arsenal fans as well. But I'm going to get into what I think is super important in this fixture. And as I said, I'm a little bit of a tactical. I'm a little bit of a tactical. They call me coach a tactical. So I've brought... <laughs> I've brought my tactic board. You guys might have seen this on Stop It's Time TV. You know when I bring this out, knowledge starts getting displayed. First and foremost, let's get into what I think is a major way that Manchester City can win this game. And that is, if you can see this clearly, production, do your damn thing. Man City's left space. So when I say Manchester City's left space, of course I'm talking about Jack Grealish. I'm talking about Gundogan coming over to that side. And I'm talking about Erling Haaland making them runs from right to left, which we know he's so good at. Running from right to left, keeper's going to be coming a little bit out. He just dinks it over the keeper. We know that finish. We've seen it about 50 times in his career already. But why I want to talk about that space is because we know... Rob Holden is going to be playing at the right, right CB side. And I'm not somebody that I understand right now Holden is getting the blame for everything. He's getting the blame for Partey's form. He's getting the blame for Ramsdale's form. He's getting the blame for Saka's form. Next thing you know, he's going to be getting the blame for Jesus not finishing chances. It's unbelievable what's going on with him at the moment. However, that left-hand space with Jack Grealish in such incredible form at the moment, I just feel like Man City are going to use that position to manipulate the ball and to drag players over, to create an overload on Ben White and Rob Holding. Listen, again, I'm not trying to put the blame on Rob Holding or anything, but of course you've got to exploit a team's weakness. And I think Thomas Partey, which I'm going to get into later, has a massive role in this as well. But it's not just Rob Holding, it's not just Ben White. Bukayo Saka is going to need to be on his A game defensively because I do believe the passes from Rodri into Gundogan, Gundogan into Jack Grealish, Jack Grealish occupying that space, potentially going in or potentially going wide, it's going to cause a lot of issues. And as I said, they've got the big white blonde machine in Erling Haaland. And we know when he makes them runs from right to left, it's deadly. So I do think the left-hand space is something that Man City are going to look to exploit on numerous occasions. And we know potentially Ake might not be playing Laporte. It might be Laporte. Who knows? But what that defender is going to do is also just show interior support, not overlap, to ensure that Arsenal's counter-attack is nullified through Saka and through breaking with Odegaard in that little right-hand space that he takes up. So it's going to be super interesting and that is a battle I'm looking forward to seeing. Jack Grealish, Gundogan, the passes from Rodri, 
Haaland, how do they exploit that space between Partey, Rob Holding, and um, Ben White? It's going to be super interesting for me. Now, number two, KDB, overlap right. Listen, guys, man, I listen, I failed in handwriting school. That was definitely one of my most difficult subjects, you know. I defo didn't get that upgraded pen. If you know, you know, in primary. If you know, you know people. But listen, KDB overlap right. Listen, close your eyes, everybody. Close your eyes. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't need to even describe it. You know what I'm talking about. KDB on the right channel, ball through to him, whip skis. Harlan, where are you, mate? As they say, F it, he's there somewhere. <laughs> Whoop, he's there somewhere. Whoop. Listen, we know what Erling Haaland is about. We know the link up between KDB and um, Haaland. We have spoken about it. I did an episode months ago. It feels like this season's dragged on so long because of the World Cup. But I did an episode months ago talking about the top five duos in football. And I had them number two, I believe. I think I had them number two behind Vinny and Benzema. It, uh, them stocks are still working. Everything's good. Nostradamus, as they say. But listen, KDB on that right-hand channel. Now, the reason why I say this is because I do believe Arteta has a massive, massive decision on his hands. Do you go with Tierney, who's a little bit more of a standard left-back, who you can potentially maybe go drop a little bit deeper when defending, see what Man City have to offer and then break forward through him, not through him, but through the team? Or do you go for the Zinchenko who's going to be coming in field? Are you going to the Etihad Arteta to dominate? If you are, we know Zinchenko is that guy that can help with Thomas Partey in that midfield. However, that space, we just saw Mares score a FA Cup semi-final hat-trick. Bernardo Silva has his feet up, you know, coffee. He's been in great form lately. They are going to look, and as I just mentioned, the left-hand over, um, overload. That right-hand side with John Stones basically doing the Zinchenko role himself. And then you've got either Mares or Bernardo Silva. And KDB, we know what RCM KDB roaming around that area. If they manipulate the ball around Zinchenko's gaps, you're giving the best player in the Premier League open space to get his head up and put a deadly ball, which we know he does, and we know who's going to eat off it. So I think that's an area that Arsenal need to be very wary of. And I think that is actually Arteta's biggest decision. Do you go with Tierney or do you go with Zinchenko? Or is he going to surprise everyone and potentially do a back five? Who knows? I'm so excited to see it. But that's the stuff for Man City. I'm not Pep. I'm close to Pep, you know. I'm like, I'm, me and Pep, you know, we sometimes we reason. I'm close to him, but not quite there yet. So, here's the next one. Martinelli on transition. And to be fair, I wanted to put Saka in there as well. That was a little bit of a mistake. But Arsenal's wing duo. Listen, they're doing things that only Ronaldo and Rooney have done at the same age. Martinelli and Saka have had great seasons individually and for the team. And they are going to be so key at the Etihad because, look, let's... In my opinion, and when I'm looking at what the game is going to be, you don't go to the Etihad and get more and dominate. I believe I've only seen Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea in their little two shanity run do that. You know, when they were just going to City and popping it, that's the only team that I've really seen go to the Etihad and just control the game. Are Arsenal going to do that? I'm not quite sure. So I believe they are going to need the transition skills of Martinelli and Saka. How are they going to break? How are they going to break in their moments? Because... What we've seen with Arsenal and Arteta is he's not actually that quite willing to change it up, you know? And that's where all the complaints about Rob Holding and all that stuff has been coming in. I think, to be a little bit critical, I think Arteta should have dropped the line a little bit deeper, made Arsenal a little bit more compact and find ways to break. You don't always win a league through plan A. So I think he's going to have to go to the Etihad, look at the blueprint, of maybe a 10, no, not at the Etihad. <laughs> Man United didn't do well at the Etihad, but I don't even want to say this guy's name, but Oli used to do it really good. <laughs> he used to do it really well. Let's give him his, let's give him his dues. Let's give him his dues. Oli used to go to the Etihad and actually have a decent plan in terms of the counter-attacking. Dan James, Martial and Rashford, or sometimes it might be Mason Greenwood. I don't know who it was. 
But Man United used to soak up the pressure, but not too much. Man United used to always have the counter threat. Always have the counter threat, which made City sometimes wary to even put all their players going forward. Now, it's a little bit different with this City team because it's not flying fullbacks anymore. It's a compact team. However, Martinelli and Saka are going to need to be in positions where, yes, they're going to need to defend, but are you ready to absolutely explode the other way when the ball comes? That is something that is so important for Arsenal. And it's going to be important for Partey and Odegaard to be ready to play them outlet balls. And I think Martinelli has a key role to play in this fixture. Also, the similar thing with Zinchenko. Stones is going to be inside. He's going to be playing in the interior. Can Martinelli expose that? Now, John Stones is a better defender than Zinchenko, but can Martinelli expose those positions sometimes? And you've got to look at it. Play off Martinelli at the moment. Whew, he's cooking. As Henri said, he's, he's cooking. Probably Arsenal's biggest player at, the, at, at this present time, you know? Like, Jesus has come in, he's done all right. Fans are getting on his back for not finishing chances. Saka hasn't really been at his best. Of course, we know about the penalty miss. Odegaard is floating in and out. Partey has been awful lately. Martinelli, big respect to him. He might be the key player for Arsenal. And lastly, on the culture cams tactic board, Thomas Partey. TP5, they call him. TP5. Listen, he's got a big job on his hands. Simple as that. Now, look, I have not been impressed with Partey lately. In the last three, four weeks, he's been way off it. You know, some people are attributing it to because he hasn't got Saliba making line-breaking passes. Or some people might say, you know, whatever the excuses are, Partey just hasn't been at the level. And I'm actually super interested to see how Thomas Partey is going to play because, look, as I mentioned, I don't think Arsenal are going to go to the Etihad, dominate the game, popping it left, right and centre. So we're going to need to see that ball recovery bag from Partey. I remember that game at the Emirates last season. I think it's actually the best game he's had in an in a Arsenal shirt. Um, and they played well. He, the Arsenal balled out. They did lose the game in the end. Rodri, late winner. But Partey had a fantastic game. He got on the ball, he tackled, he was recovering possession. That is what he's going to need to do, especially if there's doubts if Sinchenko is going to start, who kind of helps him. You know, we've seen him help on the ball and help him dominate. But lately, when Zinchenko has kind of dropped off it lately, I haven't seen that controller, like they say, from Thomas Partey. And it's going to be big. we got to remember, people, he is a winner. He is one of the people that have won trophies in the Arsenal team. Jesus, Zinchenko, Partey, they've won big trophies. They are going to be looking to him for the experience in these moments. And in the last three weeks, he has totally let them down. But maybe this might be the game for the remontada, as they say. Who knows? It's going to be super, super interesting. Shaka as well. He's going to need to be coming in and tucking in and helping out. You know what I mean? Yo, lately you've been playing like Deli Ali. You know what I mean? You've been playing like Prime Deli Ali. You might have to be tucking in and helping him. Arsenal are going to need to try and get their moments where for five minutes they've got the spell of the ball. They've got the, they've got the possession. They've got the game. Because Etihad, trust me, it gets hot in there. And an 8pm fixture. Lord almighty. Basically a UCL night at the Etihad. <laughs> Pack your bags. <laughs> Pack your bags, go home. It's going to be crazy. But that was my breakdown of where I think the game could be won and lost for both Arsenal and Man City. Let me know what you guys think. Who's going to win this one? I'm not going to give you my predictions. You guys have probably heard it on Stoppage Time TV already. It's going to be a mad one. This could be a blockbuster. And by the way, people, your boy's going to be there. <laughs> I'm going to be in there. To, listen, I'm just going to be... But maybe I might be ballied up, just, you know what I mean? You might not see me, incognito, but I'm going to be at the Etihad. It's going to be electric, it's going to be exciting, and I just can't wait. And that was another episode of FTBL Culture. A little bit of a tactical breakdown, as they say. Just where I think the game might be won and lost. Guys, as I said, let me know in the comments below, how are you feeling? Is your heart rate, your heart pumping? Listen, some people, by the end of this, your heart might be pumping Kool-Aid, as they like to say. Like, comment, share, subscribe, turn your notifications on. We are, of course, on the road to 30K. We will absolutely love to have 30K by the summer. Imagine that, 30K by the summer. Do you know how we started? Listen, people, keep supporting. That's another episode of Spill Culture.
I'm Coach Akams, and I'm out.